But you note in your article that in America, <laughs> OpenAI CEO Sam Altman testified before Congress on the importance of mm. mitigating risks of this flourishing technology. Now, while I'm prepared to ignore AI images, the real danger is coming from the AI videos where it appears that they can make a public mm. figure or a political leader ha look like they have said something or given a statement which they have not. Is this where the real danger mm -hmm. lies? And do we need laws to, at the very least, tag this content as a creation of AI? I think very much so. If you have the people who are at the coalface of developing this technology and they understand its capabilities, then, and it's against their own self-interest to be warning people about uh, these things in a commercial sense, then I think we absolutely have to take very close attention to that. I mean, even a few years ago, there was uh, kind of earlier versions of this prototypes where, for instance, Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the House, was digitally altered and slowed down to seem like she was slurring her words, uh, that kind of thing. So if you extrapolate from that and you think you could easily take Joe Biden and you could exaggerate his gait, uh, the slowness of his walk, you could make his voice higher and wispier, and you could, in fact, it's probably already happening, I imagine, and you can exaggerate that in a way which is very bordering on immoral because you're creating false messages and a false narrative. Well, it also brings up the problem about ownership, and by that I mean the ownership of your face, because AI is using information it has mm. taken from social media companies to, in some cases, recreate video files of people speaking, and not just public figures and politicians, it's capable of doing this to pretty much anyone who's been on video. Now, we all sign those terms and conditions when we join a social media platform that gives platforms ownership of our mm. content. But I don't know, Nicholas, I don't believe companies can fairly say that this includes the right to manufacture videos of us without our consent. Would that be fair? Absolutely. Um, I guess there's also an interesting implication about uh, if you want to participate in something or not, you can just say, um, I'm not interested in being at that thing, so can you just include me digitally and just uh, you know have a few <laughs> pixel-generated examples of me in the background so you can be an event or not? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the implications are vast. Uh, and another funny thing is that the National Party has a, a long and storied history of, uh, of terrible botched advertising going all the way back to a commercial where they, um, they used a theme song called Eminem-esque, uh, which just took the riff from that song, Lose Yourself, the guitar riff. And uh, they got sued terribly, but even more embarrassing is that all the late night American comedians had a field day with the New Zealand accent of uh, pronouncing Eminem and Eminem-esque. Uh, which cast us in even in worse light. You see, that just renews my opinion that Australia should have taken over New Zealand when we had the chance, because then we could have put a stop to that kind of pronunciation problem. Yeah, well, it's not like we have a military, so just you could just walk in the door. So we could just <laughs> sail across and be like, Tuesday well, afternoon, you if, might as well do it. If we had a flag, we'd be all set. We could just put it in there and then it's done. No, but in all honesty, uh, your, your freedom of speech has been quite a problem in New Zealand. Now, Australia's got its own problems with this desire to control social mm. media and to control speech. But our Dern, having left the prime ministership, is now overseeing some of this safety in an online speech. Are you concerned about the direction that free speech is going online in New Zealand? Because it's hard. You want to protect against things like these AI chatbots, but at the same time, you want to protect the free mm. speech of individual citizens. Yeah, I mean, it's always very complex territory. And I think um, the Ardern thing I think you were alluding to is based around uh, the Christchurch uh, mosque massacre and the, uh, the response time that social media has as a kind of um, onus on it to respond quickly if there's an event like that. And so you have censorship issues around there. So I'm a little bit more open to that. But um, yeah, I mean, there's we had uh, Parker Posey, she visited you and then she uh, visited us as well very briefly and got shouted down. Um, but that was about the trans debate. And it was interesting because um, all the activists uh, from the LGBT community who uh, were taking the view of refusing to be silenced were sort of silencing her, but also being incredibly visible on their social media ecosystem of live streaming what was happening and uh, and shaping the narrative in their own way. So on the left and the right, there's an immense amount of uh, extraordinary uh, variables to think of, and it requires a sensible debate. Um, but I will always lean more towards the libertarian free speech in the end. 
Yeah, I think I could probably live with the AI chatbots if it meant that the public discourse was ultimately protected. I think I'd be prepared to make that sacrifice. Yeah.